Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another one of my Robotech RPG Tactics uh, updates. Uh, this one is uh, middle of July, and uh, it looks like they're going to be uh, getting into the states here pretty soon with the packages. But there was an update that came out uh, just a little while ago, and I wanted to make sure you guys saw it. Plus, uh, due to popular requests, I've had some people ask me, like, Mr. Everything, what are you getting in, you know, when, when it comes in, what are you going to get? Like, how much of it is, are you getting? Well, I've created a spreadsheet that actually I needed to because I, I, I myself wasn't even sure what I was getting. So I created a spreadsheet so that I could show you exactly what I'm getting and so I can show myself. And I'll, I'm going to share that with you at the end of this little, this little thing. Uh, this one's going to be fast, actually, because all it is, general overview of this update was hey we're going to Gen Con Indy we told you we were gonna bring product but we're not sure if we will or not because there's been some people that have said that that's not fair to the Kickstarter backers they're gonna ask they're basically asking for permission if they can bring the product to Indy so that they can show off the product uh, but at the same time while they're doing that they will be shipping it out to us they're asking for us to go in and vote well guess what I went in and voted and I'll tell you what my vote is uh, I voted yes but let's go ahead and uh, explain. I'm going to explain what they're, you know. It says, uh, you, you can go on their website. It's robotechgamecenter.com, and you can uh, read this for yourself. But basically it says it should have been out last year, and they know that, and they're sorry, but it's been turbulent, and they've, they've had to keep pushing it back and pushing it back because they wanted it to be, they wanted the product to be right. They didn't want to ship out some piece of junk, and they wanted it to be a product that they could be proud of you know and uh, and I appreciate that um, yeah I wanted it last year Shit, hell I wanted it now you know but but that's not why I backed I didn't back because I knew I was gonna be the first one to get the product that's not what Kickstarter is about in my opinion uh, Kickstarter is about seeing something that you would love to be made or created and the, the people that want to make it just don't have the funds to do it and so you are basically donating money to them so that they can create something that not only do they want to make, but you also want them to make. That's what Kickstarter's about. Now, a lot of times, and pretty much every time, Kickstarter, I don't know what you call them, but people that use Kickstarter, crowdfunding, will offer you things in return for that donation. Like they will say, if you donate XYZ, we're going to give you ABC, right? And most people consider that like they are entitled to get something out of a Kickstarter. Well, you know what? Kickstarter is not like that. That's not what Kickstarter's. That's not what you should be. That's not your mentality when you go into a Kickstarter. Your Kickstarter should be all right. They're going to create something that I really want too. So here, let me go ahead and give them some money to help them create this product. And if that's not your mentality, then don't give them any money. You know. And then oh, they're going to give me a copy of the game free. Well, it's not free, but yeah, they're going to give me a copy of the game because I helped them create this product. That's awesome. That's a bonus. That's not. Uh, that's not why you back. You don't back to get the product. Some people do. I'm going to say thousands of prob probably do. Out of the five thousand plus people that are backing, I bet you uh, most of them only backed because they knew they were going to get more than what the retail value would be. I bet you that's the sole reason. But then again, there's a lot of people like myself. You know, if they said, hey, if you back us, we'll give you a free Minmay uh, doll or whatever. Maybe not that. I probably wouldn't have backed. But um, if, if they say, we'll give you a free copy of the game. You know, it'll, it'll cost you $150. We'll give you, a, we'll give you a free copy of the game, which is uh, retails at $80. <laughs> I probably still would have backed, you know, you know I, because that's something that I would, I'm excited about. I want this to happen, you know, but I'm not backing. Here we go. Here's the key. I'm not backing to be the first one to receive the product. I know I will be. Okay. I know that it's, they promised that, you know, the Kickstarters are obviously going to be the first one to get their product. Of course, because they're the first ones to pay, right? But if I'm the 10th, if I'm the 100th, if I'm the 5,000th guy to receive my product, that's fine. That's that's perfectly fine. If you want to, yeah, I don't know. I some people, man, there's some people out there are so selfish. 
damn, it, it, it pains me to have to tell you this, that that, they, that that Palladium had to come up with this Kickstarter post here and ask for permission to sell their game at a trade show called Gen Con where they can go and promote and advertise their product to people that will keep this game alive. They have to ask the backers if it's okay. It's pretty sad. And then and then what's what's really sad. This is what's really sad is that there are backers. See they they say please post yes or no on the comments to update and make sure you do it by J uh, July 21st because that's when they have to pretty much finalize whether or not they're going to bring the product to Gen Con or not. And they also say that if you don't post, you're pretty much saying that it's okay and you're just you're not you, you know, you're not worried about it. And so you're not going to you're not going to post. And and that's cool too. I even considered not posting, you know, just because I knew not posting was going to be considered a yes. Um, I'm cleaning my desk while I'm talking to you guys. But no, I, I considered not posting so that um, it would automatically be considered a yes vote. But when I went in and looked at some of the votes, I saw like five, six, seven votes, and they had a no on it. They actually said no. They don't want you to take it to Gen Con. What are these guys thinking? Are they? They're retarded. They're they're idiots. Do they not understand how the game economy works? Do they not understand that if that if Palladium get, doesn't get out there and advertise this game, that those five thousand Kickstarter backers are going to be the only people with the game, and they'll be the only ones that play it? And what 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 do you what? It just I freaked out when I saw there was people actually putting no votes on there. So I said, "Screw it, man! I got I got to put a yes in there just to just to just to balance it out in the voting, you know." So I typed in a yes, and I explained why. I said, "Please go to Gen Con with some product, and please show this off, and drum up some interest in this game, and get a lot of people excited about it. Please do that for me." <laughs> wow. I don't think. I think probably maybe. Okay, out of the five thousand, let's say let's say one thousand of them don't want them to do that, right? That's that's twenty percent, right? And if they all vote no, they got a thousand no votes. Guess what? You still have four thousand yes votes. So, <laughs> I think it's a I think it's a vocal minority. I hope it is because. Man, I'd hate to be going to like conventions and and just local game stores and playing Robotech with people like that. You know, it's just I hope the community's not like that. You know, if the community's like that, I'll be playing with my closest friends only, and that's pretty sad because I I really enjoy playing games with people I don't know. You know, you see new strategies, see new tactics and stuff, and wow, those guys. Okay, having having said that, I voted a yes because I want them to go to Gen Con. I want them to take this product there. Uh, now let's go ahead and get into what I'm actually getting. Okay, this could be a second half video. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna flip it over to our, my monitor left. I've got this spreadsheet I put up to put together right here, and I'm gonna look over at it right here. Um, now, when I backed, I backed quite a bit of money actually. I backed a Battle Cry. I also ba backed First Contact, and I also threw in a couple add-ons. Okay, so uh, with a certain level of backing, like First Contact is a small one, uh, with First Contact you get some some Kickstarter bonuses they throw in there because you're a Kickstarter. Battle Cry did the same thing. That's that's a pretty pretty much like two First Contacts thrown together, but it uh, it gives you a lot more Kickstarting bonuses. Like if you if you backed it, you get a bunch more models. And then of course when I went to uh, do the actual pledge thing. I saw that they were adding, you can put add-ons, you know, things that you didn't get added or didn't want to back directly for. And I did that too. I, I added like the monster and stuff. But here, let's go let's go down the line and just look at the quantities that you get. These are the quantities. I'm just going to show you. This is the quantities you get in first contact, right? And these are the quantities you got with Battlecry. I think this was like an $80 pledge. And I think this is a $140 pledge. And these are the things that I added on myself. And this is the totals that I'm that I'm getting right now. Uh, I'm going to have two rule books. Okay, I'm going to have two rule books because I'm getting one in each in each set. So what that means is I can when we're playing, everybody on the table will have an opportunity to look at the rule book. 
or when I go to a convention or something, I can pass the rule books out and let people see because I plan to be a uh, a, a vocal uh, proponent for this game. I plan to go to conventions and demo it and stuff like that. So even if I have to do that on my own. And then game carts, right? You get two sets. In Battlecry, they promised that they would laminate them. But I wonder if all 80 of them are going to be laminated. I don't know. If not, it's okay. They don't have to be laminated. But because uh, I can laminate them myself. I ha- I'm just that skilled. Okay, and then we go to uh, dice, right? I'm going to get two sets of dice. So I'm going to have 24 for the for the UEDF, and I'm going to get 24 for Zentradi. That means on the on the battlefield, everybody's going to have a bunch of dice, so they're, they're not going to be like, oh, can you hand me the dice? Can you hand me the dice? That's always slows the game down, especially in a convention when you got multiple players. Plus, it's just D6, and I've got hundreds of D6. So I've got thousands of D6, probably. If I had to count my D6, I probably have over 1,000 D6. Okay, now, um, decal sheets. The, they were giving me two decal sheets. I didn't even realize they were giving me decal sheets. I went ahead and added the add-on for decal sheets because uh, I didn't realize that my kickstarting level had qualified me for decal sheets. So, But I'm going to have three decal sheets for each side. I'm going to have the UEDF, and, and that's probably going to be enough for all my models, hopefully. Uh, tokens, I'm going to have enough tokens for everybody to use. I'm going to have 20 and 20. Uh, artillery template, I'm going to have two. So both sides of the table, I'll have their own artillery template. Valkyries, 14 Valkyries. Now, a Valkyrie, you know, as you know, comes in three poses. And there's three models you have to make and paint because you might sw- switch modes. You might be in a battleoid mode, and then you switch to guardian mode, and then you switch to fighter mode. And if you do that, you need to have a model for each one of those modes. So 14 Valkyries is it's 42, 1, 2, 3, 42, yeah, 42 models of just Valkyries. That's, that's freaking awesome, dude. 42 Valkyries. Okay, and then my Tomahawks, I've got four of those and four Defenders. In the initial Kickstarter, it said I can make either one of them. So if I wanted to, I could make eight Tomahawks, but I don't want to do that. I'll probably go four and four. And then a destroid upgrade kit. I'm getting two of those. That makes some officer officer destroids if I wanted to. Um, I don't know what the rules are on that and whether or not I want to do that. You know, I'm sure I do. I'm sure it's an advantage. And then battle pods. I'm getting an S ton of battle pods. I'm getting 36 battle pods. That's that's like a boat load of battle pods. I'm getting like three recon battle pods, three officer battle pods, uh, three recovery pods. I think those are mainly for. Uh, while in space, actually. I'm getting a Mach 2 monster. One of the box sets of the uh, Zentradi infantry, and I think there's 12 infantry in the box. It's like a $30 box, and it has uh, infantry that, instead of a bottle, battle pod, it would be the infantry guys. Basically, it's the giants. Uh, and then you got the an art print that's going to be in there. I'm getting Rick Hunter in all three poses. I'm getting Roy Foker in all three poses. I'm also getting a Myria and a Chiron, but I'm getting uh, two Spartans and two Phalanx. Okay, if, you, if you're familiar with the Spartan, it's the one with the club and the missiles on the shoulders, and then the Phalanx is the one with the big missile pods on the side. Okay, and then I'm getting uh, four artillery battle pods. Those are the battle pods that have like these big missile things on the top. It's pretty awesome. And then the gear, the girl fighters. Uh, basically, those are the space fighters for uh, the Zentradi. And then there's the Nas Jadul Gur. Those are those basically look like uh, male power armor is what it kind of looks like to me. And there's three of those. And then I'm getting two Super Valkyries. Those are the ones with the rocket thruster packs on the Valkyrie that, where it can uh, take off from the planet. And then uh, female power armor, getting three of those. So there's three male, three female. And then I'm getting a couple of Lancers. That's I don't know what the rules are going to be like for having space combat. Uh, I hope there is. Uh, space combat will be super awesome. That'll be like uh, the girl fighters against the Lancers. That's pretty cool. And then I have no idea what that thing looks like. That It looked like uh, a, a male fighter, but with super extra armor and stuff. I don't know what it is. And then the ghost drones. Those are like pilotless fighters. Uh, I thought those were in... I honestly thought those were in a like a Macross after not the like super dimensional fortress or something i thought that was a futuristic fighter and not i know not like these robotech fighters aren't futuristic but i mean like uh, because you have the macross saga where the earth gets blown up and the zentradi and the humans start working together right that's the that's the end of the macross saga and then the ghost fighter comes in later like they 
like when they're fighting the Robotech Masters or something. I don't think it's... I don't know why I'm getting it, but it was... It's a Kickstarter backer. I think they just, they just were like reaching deep to get additional things for Kickstarter backers, and they dug into the Ghost Fighters. Um, I don't think that's going to be in Wave 1. I think that's going to be probably Wave 2 or 3. Uh, but Wave 1 is going to have most of this in it. Wave 1 is going to have the rulebook, game cards, dice, decal sheets, tokens... Uh, templates, Valkyries, Tomahawk Defenders, Battle Pods. Re- I, don't, I don't know about the Recon Battle Pods, but I think so. Officer Battle Pods. I don't think... Th- yeah, the monster. I've seen the model of the monster, so the monster. I don't think the Zentradi Infantry is going to be part of the uh, first wave. Rick Hunter, Roy Foker, Spartan Phalanx, Chiron, Myria. All the way down to there, I think, is the first wave. So that's pretty... That's going to be a lot of models to paint, dude. I'm going to... Uh, what is How many models is that? I mean, I don't want to even do the math, but it's like 100 models maybe? Maybe more than that, right? So I'll be I'll be a painting mother... I'll be, I'll be painting. So uh, you'll come back and watch some videos of me with my stuff. Uh, I will do an unboxing. When I get it, I'll do an unboxing. I'll do, a, I'll do a first impression review. And then as I'm doing the painting and the model building and stuff like that, I'll do other videos. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is do like, coming up with this off the top of my head, but I'll probably take each model. Like I'll do a Valkyrie video, and then I'll do a Destroid uh, Tomahawk video. Then I'll do a... Uh, Defender video and a Battle Pod video and a Recon. Yeah, so I'll probably do a video on each one of those on how to assemble it and uh, how to fix any blemishes and things like that. And then also I'll do painting videos. So there's going to be tons of videos on this Robotech stuff. Uh, Just come back and look at it. I'm really kind of waiting for the product to get in my hand before I start really cranking out some videos. All right. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this uh, Robotech RPG Tactics video. And uh, I look forward to maybe playing with some of you guys at conventions or game stores. And, uh, See you next time.